This is the Ryback and Ryback seam tester. It's designed to allow the converter to objectively test the strength of a seam. In the past, this test was performed by an operator, and it's an extremely subjective test, and it was hard to determine if you had a good seam or if you had a bad seam. What we're going to do here today, I've cut a sample of a label. I'm going to take that sample and I'm going to position it underneath the clamp so my seam is in the center of these two parallel lines. Once I have it in position, my cutter here is a one inch wide sample cutter. I'm going to line it up so as I pull it towards me, it will travel along these two black parallel lines and it will give me a one inch wide sample that I can perform my tests on. I don't know if you can clearly see it, but it's a one inch wide sample. Now I'm going to open up the, sleeve, open up the sample, peel this back about three quarters of an inch. And as I peel it back, I'm going to fold it onto itself so the outside edges are parallel with each other. Next, I'm going to open up the jaws, the clamps on the jaws, and there's little black thumb screws on the side. And I'm going to insert half of this in the bottom clamp and half of it in the upper clamp. And as I position these, I'm going to line up the outside edge with the outside edge of the clamp. Tighten the bottom one. Tighten the top one. We're ready to perform our test. On the top of the operator's panel, there's a button, and it should be green right now. And when I look at my display, it says press green button to start test. I'm going to press the button. Now it's going to begin the test. As we're testing, I've set this up so the test length is 200 millimeters. You could vary this depending on the size of your label. You could adjust the length, but in this particular test I did 200 millimeters. As it's pulling up, it's measuring, it's taking a reading every one half millimeter. So in a 200 millimeter length, I'm actually recording 400 measurements. Once I get to the preset length, the unit will stop. And on the screen here, it will give me a display. The first thing it tells me is the test number. And we each test has its own unique number. So if you want to record a particular job, you know what range of numbers you ran it in. In this case, our test is number 365. It also gives me my readings. It gives me my minimum reading, my maximum reading, and my average reading. Now, you as the converter will have to establish what your minimum standard is. And that's fairly simple to do after you perform a couple trials on this. Once I have these numbers, I can now send it to a printer. The numbers will remain on the screen until I press the green flashing button, and then it will automatically send it to our thermal printer. You can see again, it tells me my test number. It gives me the speed that I have the unit traversing at. The distance is 200 millimeters. My minimum strength is 57 grams. The maximum strength is 172 grams. I'm sampling 400 samples and my average is 105 grams. It also displays a chart on the side, and it shows 
the minimum grams, the maximum grams, and my sample length on the chart. What you would do with this printed sample is you would attach it to your retained sample and now you have a permanent record of how that particular role tested. It could be used in the event you get a call from a customer and they have any questions or complaints or issues. You could go back, look at the measurement on your sample and determine was this a good seam or a bad seam. The unit also has an SD card in the side. Now the SD card, after you perform your tests, this can be removed, put into a computer, and opened up in Excel or some other uh, software that you want to use it. And you can retain a permanent record of a particular job or a batch or however you want to record it for future reference. Now the unit requires that the SD card be inserted during operation. And if for some reason you try to perform a test without the SD card in here, it will tell you on the display SD card missing must insert. To return your jaws to home position, now you can just simply depress the green button. The jaws will automatically close. In the event that something happened and you need to stop the unit immediately, all I have to do is push the button, it will go into an e-stop. In order to reset it, I just, once it clears, the button turns green, I push it again, and it'll begin, I have to push it twice, and it'll begin to go back home. I wanted to show you, we have a couple adjustments on the unit. The first one is, I could adjust the speed that the jaws traverse at, that I'm performing the test at. And it's a fairly simple test, I just come over here to the speed button. You can see it displays on my screen, and I could go 4 millimeters a minute or slower. You cannot exceed 4 mil millimeters a minute. Once I make the change, after a few seconds, the screen will go back to the home position and it's been set to whatever speed that I've determined I want to run the unit at. The next button we have is the distance. When I push the distance button, again you can see on the screen right now my sample is 200 mill millimeters long. If I want to make the length longer, I just press the up button. And every time I depress it, it goes up 5 millimeters every time I depress. Again, if I want to lower it, I just depress the down button. Once I have it set to where I want it, the unit will automatically enter that, and it'll go back to the home screen. Fairly simple, fairly easy, uh, not real complicated.